All right, so oh, we're talking about fossils now, and there's really no good place to put fossils in because fossils are everything. It just happens to be everything that has been on our planet um, and are no longer around. And they have been uh, mineralized and preserved in a way that we can find now. So I, I kind of put it in before we get to uh, plants and animal kingdoms. So we're going to be talking about uh, the different parts, of course, a uh, dinosaur's skull. And there is some terminology to this, okay? So let's get started. We are going to be looking at the theopods, which means terrible foot. Okay, so these are all the um, three-toed dinosaurs that had uh, the raptors, allosaurus, carnotaurus, t-rex, spinosaurus, all the ones that walked on two legs usually and uh, were predators. Okay, so they have big teeth. So we're going to be looking at one of those skulls. So in your sketchbooks, if you need to go get your sketchbooks, pause me and go get your sketchbooks. If not, I'm getting started. We are simply going to draw the top part of the skull. We're going to come down around, make obviously where uh, the maxilla, okay, or top part of the jaw is. Going to have a hingy part here. Remember, this is just a big hinged jaw, okay, that's going to hook underneath. Going to have the back of the skull and simply connect there. Well, top part of the skull where the brain and everything is, but we also are going to have the lower part. Try and make it just slightly behind okay where this is because when it closes it actually comes together with a little bit of an underbite a little bit of an overbite I'm gonna come back make it kind of a paddle shape and then tighten it up so we have a large hinged jaw we can put the hinge right in here okay we of course lining all this not all the way to the back because if it lined it all the way to the back every time it gnash itself it also gnash its very sharp um, steak knife like teeth into its gums and we don't want that so we're actually going to go a little bit forward and start here and it's just pointy teeth some can be big and some can be small. Okay, pointing backwards, of course, to get that biting power. And same thing at the bottom, you're not going to go all the way back. Okay. So we got these teeth here. Um, if we put them under the microscope, we will see that they are serrated. And then we have um, what are called the fenestra. Now, in us, when we talk about sinuses, I'm sure some of y'all have had a sinus infection before, or um, your mom's had a sinus infection before, or uncle's had a sinus infection. So that's what we call um, the holes and pockets that are actually in our skull to lighten our skull. Because if our skull was solid bone, we'd all be going around with our heads hanging down low and back problems because our heads would be super duper heavy. What sciences do is they help lighten the load and that um, is what this next thing is going to be for the dinosaur. It's called fenestras in dinosaurs though. So we're going to have the eye orbit right here. We're going to have an M-shaped 
Fenestra back here. We had the really large anti-orbital fenestra here. Anti just simply means before, okay? Um, it's anterior to the orbital fossa right here. We have a small one here, but it's not the nostril. Nostrils are at the front. So you should have one, two, three different fenestra, the orbit, okay, which is where the eye is going to be, and then the nasal cavity or nasal hole, okay, that goes in. Now, what this is serving, other than to lighten the load, because you can actually see all the way through the skull, is it's actually making a giant pocket chamber right here. Breathe in, they have um, sensory sm um, cells for smelling all throughout this chamber, which means that they had an amazing sense of smell. Think dogs. Dogs have long chambers that go all the way up their snouts. Same thing with T-Rexes. Um, that's why we believe a lot of these animals, other than being ambush predators, were also amazing scavengers. Okay, So it's little clues that have been left behind. So not only do we have these up here, but we also have a small fenestra to help lighten the load of the jaw so they don't go around slack-jawed all the time. So we have these. And then we have a very interesting thing on um, this happening in the orbit. And a lot of bird species have this still. And I'm not getting into any arguments today on, on where birds came from, okay? I'm just saying that if you dissected a bird, you'd probably find these. But there is actually a ring of bones. So put a big old bullseye O here. That actually controlled um, the size of the pupil. Instead of having a bunch of muscles like mammals do, these bones actually upheld not only the structure of the eye, but also helped with um, the size of the pupil and uh, focusing the eye as well. They served as a pinch point for all those muscles to work from. So yes, there is actually kind of this jello mold looking thing for the eye right here. And if you want to draw the other side of these fenestras so you can actually see through the skull, you can. This actually has a septum in between so you cannot see all the way through the nose holes. This is where their ear was, and unfortunately their brain's kind of in the way of going through this one, but there is a hole here to help lighten the load. And this one, there is also a septum of the palate in between, so no, we can't see through that one, but we can see through these two. All right, so if that's the basic thing of a skull, what you're going to do is you're going to get a piece of watercolor paper and um, there's a reason why I asked uh, Miss Lorenz to show you a video of Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe, um, as an artist, an amazing artist, um, one of the first art books I ever received as a gift from a man Jane, Jim Rosen was a Georgia O'Keeffe book. And it was small. It's in my library somewhere. I know I can find it if I looked. Um, but I don't got a lot of time today. Um, she found the beauty in bones. I know some of you are like, ew, bones, ew. But no, there's beauty in bones. Okay, the structural, architectural beauty of them. And so we're going to actually take this design of a theopod skull, and we're going to combine it with Georgia Keefe's art to mimic what she did with Ram's Head Hollyhock Hills. Okay, that she did in watercolor in her beloved New Mexico. So what we're going to do is after you redraw this nice and big on your, excuse me, on your uh, watercolor paper, and I want it to be horizontal, please, so you have a nice wide room to work with. 
is somewhere on here. It could be on the dinosaur's head. It could be off to the side, just like hers. Is we're going to have a flower. Does not have to be exactly like mine. Okay, if your flower is only a five petal flower, it is still a happy little flower. But you're going to put a flower on this dinosaur's head. You heard me right. We are going to have the clouds and everything, just like hers in the background. So do some clouds. It could be a super stormy sky. It could be a kind of a stormy sky, overcast day. And then since it's appropriate that this is in the um, New Mexico because we're talking the American Southwest, okay? And the American Southwest is a treasure trove for a lot of theopod species that we find right here in America, okay? So, go ahead and we are going to add our hills. You have little trees on them. Our hills of the American Southwest. Down here. I know this isn't a very technical lesson, but um, you know what? I just don't have time. I just don't have time. I will have a surprise for y'all next time. Looks like he's burping. All right, whatever. All right, so you want flower, of course, skull as your main focal point, and a cloudy kind of background, the hills of the American Southwest down below. You're going to watercolor this, okay, nicely. You can outline with um, permanent markers or crayons, your choice, or colored pencils, um, once it's dry or semi-dry. And I can't wait to see what y'all come up with um, for your dinosaurs with hollyhock uh, next time. All right, get to it. That's my lesson for you. Bye.